Hey Zebra Summit, my name is Eamon Akhtar. I'm a 3D artist in Los Angeles and I've been using ZBrush since about 2006, so a long time. It's a regular part of my workflow, daily sculpting, and it's a really awesome tool. Um, I do it a lot for 3D printing and toys and articulated characters as well as concept art maquettes. So the tip and trick I wanted to share with you today is about how to use render booleans to create keys for your 3D prints. I've got this model here set up and I crocheted that I've sculpted. And let's switch it to a Sculpey material. What I'm gonna do is show you how to start making keys for your own projects. Now, I'm gonna get rid of the base because so, I don't need it. So I'll click Auto Groups, Control Shift click on it and go under Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. You'll also notice that the eyes are separate colors, and that's because they're separate pieces, but for 3D printing, you don't want multiple meshes overlapping each other or intersecting. You want it to be one solid piece. And ZBrush is really great because the standard DynaMesh at the right resolution can do just that. It'll create one watertight piece of object. So there we go. Now this is technically 3D print ready, though I might take it through Decimation Master. However, what if you wanted to have heads that swapped out? Then you may want to create a slice right there to have the head printed separately. This also applies for if you're trying to 3D print something really large, uh, you may need to print it in a bunch of smaller pieces so that each piece can be oriented and supported for, you know, optimally for that piece. For example, the head, you don't want supports coming in on the face because that'll damage and, you know, create chips that you have to fill in. And that these are the kind of considerations you have to make as a digital artist making things for the real world. You have to kind of think like an engineer and know how things are going to be made. So let's get started. In order to split this, it's pretty straightforward. Let me duplicate this so I have a backup model. And I'll switch over to my slice curve brush while holding Control Shift. This will let me draw it out as I click Control Shift. And you'll see it changes the poly group color. And I can go simply to Subtool, Split, Group Split. And now I've got a head and a body. Another pro tip for you, always label. You'll notice, however, that the body's got a hole in it. And this isn't ideal for 3D printing either. You can't have holes in the meshes. They need to be solid and watertight. You can double check by going under display properties and turning on double and confirm that yes, indeed, that needs to be filled. And DynaMesh is really great again because you can simply just DynaMesh by control dragging and it'll fill that in. Do the same thing on the head. Now this is technically good enough, but the head will just slide off the body. There's nothing to keep it in place there. Um, maybe glue, but if you want to swap the heads out, then maybe you want to create a, an actual key to pop that on. The way we're going to do that is by creating a new key, and I'll show you how to do it. So I'll press Control N to clear my canvas, go to Cube 3D, and draw that out. We'll click on Make Poly Mesh 3D, and under the Deformation tab, I'll click on Taper, maybe just in the Y. And let's taper that down a little bit. And so this is a pretty standard key, just a tapered square key, but it's perfect for plopping something on and taking it off. I'm going to look at it from the top down and create an insert mesh brush inside my brush palette, new. And then when I go back to my body, I can draw it on over there. If I'm trying to be precise, I'll press the X key to turn on symmetry. And then when I come to the center, it'll kind of snap and become one object. And I'll draw it there. You'll also notice if you switch to any of your move, transport, rotate tools, you can drag it in and out. 
whether you're on traditional transpose or the new gizmo. And you want this to be slightly buried into the mesh and then just DynaMesh. And that kind of blends it all together and makes it one piece. Now we're going to duplicate the body and call it body cutter. Maybe inflate it also. Not much, maybe just by one. And we'll click on that half moon shape icon because we're going to use the body to cut out of the head in order to create that key. Now you'll notice at this point it's already happened and that's because I've got render live booleans turned on. If you don't, you won't see anything. But if I turn it on, that body disappears because that half moon icon actually makes it a cutter. And if you really want to double down on making something a cutter, you can go under poly groups and let's see, make sure we have the body selected. You can see it in polyframe. Under poly groups, you can say group as DynaMesh sub. And that's kind of doubly making sure that something's a cutter. Turn solo mode off. These are really great, the booleans, the render booleans like this, because this has not actually happened yet. This is just a preview of what's to come. So this allows us to actually adjust the sculpt on the fly. I can change that key, make it smaller, bigger. I can even rotate the position, say if I wanted a really clean cut around this edge of the face, I can move that up. So boolean cutters are really powerful like that. But what I'm going to do is just demonstrate and I'll show you now a much faster way of doing all of this. So go to the head, go under Booleans and make Boolean mesh. It's gonna think about it for a second. And there it is. It'll plop it on as its own model, but there's the head. So we'll call this then body keyed and append that head, which we'll call head keyed. And you'll see how that fits on top of the other one. Now, let me show you a way of doing this a lot faster. It's just by using a smarter Boolean tool. We're gonna go over to that cube that we were working with and let's duplicate it. So first we'll have that as a backup and let's go under Z modeler, ZM, to add some edge loops. So we'll come over to the edge and add some edge loops I'm going to go make sure your perspective mode is turned off and you can select that and simply scale it up. I'm going to move it up as well a little bit. And I don't really want it to be super thick so I'm going to make it a bit thinner. All right, so now we've got that, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and DynaMesh it. Let's DynaMesh that, let's say 128 resolution. And now we're gonna take that model that was above it and actually move it down a little bit and use that as a Boolean cutter so that we can have a negative. And you can actually see in transparency mode how this goes in and customize it a bit if you'd like. Maybe I'll move it up. Yeah. 
All right. So now we'll have this object and we'll use that as our cutter. So go under, well, let's first make it a final thing because it's still a render Boolean. I'll go to render, no, I'll go to Boolean and make Boolean mesh. There it is. And we'll now go over to our IMM brush. So we'll go to brush, create insert mesh, and go back to our body. And now I'm going to use the original body. So no slices or keys on it. This is just the DynaMesh piece that we had originally. And I can draw it on just while holding shift, split it so it's its own item, and move it into place. Now you can use the transparency mode to make sure it's nice and clean, and you can rotate it. and move it however you please. Now you can see one edge is a bit longer than the other one. And that was just because when I scaled from the gizmo, it wasn't at the center. But it'll still work for our goals. I'm gonna use that as the cutter now. Turn off transparency mode, and you can already see what's happening. It's going to, in one cut, prep the head and the body. Rather than this being a 10, 15 minute process, it's gonna be a one minute process. So I'll just simply click on Boolean now, make Boolean mesh. It's gonna think about it again. And here we are. You can do auto groups, and then you'll see that the head has been keyed perfectly with the tolerances, and so is the body. And you can simply just split, group split, and now you've got a body keyed and a head keyed. So that was my pro tip. It's using render booleans in order to create your keys and articulation for 3D print. Now you don't have to just do a simple tapered square. You can also do a hinge joint or you can do a ball joint and there's a whole bunch of joints in the middle. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, I highly recommend check out ZBrush, get it. I have a brush on Gumroad called Keys and Articulation which is does basically just this. So you can check that out and follow other ZBrush artists, see what we're all up to. Uh, check out the ZBrush live streams, they're pretty cool. I hop on sometimes. So that's my tip. Thank you everyone for having me and I hope you enjoy the rest of the ZBrush Summit. Thanks so much. Cheers.